Here on the Daddy Curbs farm, we're finally getting into raising quail. We recently hatched out a batch of quail, and now I need to get the cages done. Here's one finished cage of the three that I'm building. Let me show you around the finished cage, and then we'll go into the barn, and I'll show you how I'm assembling this simple cage for quail. First of all, the design for this cage primarily comes from a friend of ours who was already raising quail. He got a lot of his inspiration from several uh, quail keepers on YouTube. This one is just a slight adaptation to what I've already seen at my friend's place. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about it. It's two feet deep, four feet long, and overall 15 and a half inches tall, and that will give room for eight to ten birds. My goal is to have three of these cages total. Four feet times three is twelve. I've already built the stand for three cages. Uh, there's a few modifications to the overall setup that you'll see at the end of the video that will include a roof and a little uh, standoff on the bottom and I'll explain why that in a little bit. But let me show you some of the features here. The concept is that about uh, two-thirds of it is just cage space accessible through this one drop gate so they have plenty of room it's easy to reach in there if you look back in this corner there's a space for them to hop into the sandbox area and the sandbox area is to give them a place uh, to be a little more private to have some sand to roll around in to dust bathe and also, according to my friend who's been doing this for a while, um, he said that they really do prefer to lay their eggs in the sandbox. So that'll just give them a private place to hang out, roll around in the dust, and lay their eggs. Every time I use the table saw, I'm wearing my mask. I don't know if you guys know this, but I actually got a nail in the face. Uh, about a three quarter inch long nail went into my cheek and I had to have a piece of it cut out. Now I wear the mask. these to be 12 inch pieces so I'm going to set this up cross cut at 12 inches. Except for doors, wire, and hardware, these are the main components of the cage. We're going to have our ripped 2x2, two two, which is uh, roughly inch and a half by inch and 5 eighths. There's going to be 13 of these at 12 inches, 6 of these at 21 inches, 4 of these at 48 inches, and then a few pieces of... <coughs> There's going to be 3 of these pieces of plywood at 21 by the overall height of the cage, which is rough, roughly 15 and 3 eighths. Your dimensions might be slightly different based on uh, how you cut your lumber. So there's three of those, and then there's one piece that is 16 inches by the same 15 and 3 eighths, 15 and a half or so, depending on the height of your cage. So over here on this table, you can see how some of these are coming together. This is gonna be the front piece these are two of those 48s and four of those 12s. This is that front left corner. 
the sandbox area and the main door. The back side, which is just, uh, it's gonna be wire on this side and this is the back side of that sandbox area. So this piece of plywood will go on here. And then we're gonna have three pieces constructed, three rectangles with plywood, two 21 inch pieces and two 12 inch pieces. All of these are constructed simply with one screw in the ends. And then when the plywood goes on, I just snapped it with some staples with the, the pneumatic stapler. One of these three rectangles will have the door to the sandbox area cut into it. And so now I'll show you how I'm putting these together. I'm using half inch hardware cloth. A lot of this wire that I'm using today is salvaged from old materials, but I do also have, I do also have a roll of new wire uh, because I won't have enough of the old. As much as possible, I like to try to use reclaimed or salvaged materials to make something useful out of something that would otherwise go in the trash. It is a good idea when you're cutting this hardware cloth to wear gloves because it can really tear your hands up. I'm always evaluating which pieces do I have so that I can use the smallest possible piece to accomplish something so I'm not wasting wire. Now that I have that cut to size, I like it to be just a little bit inside so that those sharp wire points aren't sticking out and catching animals or ourselves. I'm just using a little stapler, pneumatic stapler to get it all held in place. And I try to cross the uh, intersections, makes it a little stronger, breaks less wire. Some cases, the staples don't go down all the way. You just give them a tap. Now the other place that a piece of wire goes on this is on the inside of the back, which would be this piece here. So let's get... With that wire now put on the inside, we turn it over and put a piece of plywood in the up. That is the back side and the front side. Keep that in mind. A solid piece down on this end with the plywood on the inside. When you do things by yourself, which I'm often doing projects by myself, wood clamps can be exactly the tool you need. Put a little pressure on that to hold that. And put another solid piece down here. Now on this end, we're putting the plywood to the outside. And then the sandbox entrance with the plywood toward the large area of the cage. And I'm just going to line, line up the face of the plywood to the inside of this piece right here. I am using a drill bit for pilot holes uh, before I put the screw in, but I've already done that uh, on most of these because I actually put this together once and took it apart because I messed up.
basically, of course we need doors, a sandbox, top and bottom wire, but that is your main framework. I'm going to go ahead and put a few more screws in here and here just for a little extra strength. One of the details I forgot to put in before I painted were these angled boards for the sandbox area so that the birds don't sit up here on the edges and poop. They are installed. I'll go ahead and hit them with paint just so they're all coated. I got them on top and bottom. Now it's all about getting the doors put the hinges on, put the locks on, and then cover tops and bottoms with wire. This is the process of putting the wire on the top and the bottom. This particular box ended up just a little bit wonky, so I'm only going to staple one side and then try to work it out. Um, it should flex, but I want to make sure I get it straightened out before I get it all stapled down. I think by getting one side squared off and standing it up, I can flex it into place and then the wire will help keep it. that worked. Now I can lay it back down. It's a real bummer getting a ripple in these and then having to try to undo it and unkink it. So you have to be careful when you're putting it down that you're going on square. Turn it over, do it again on the bottom. This was a 50 foot roll of two foot half inch hardware cloth. If you wanted to make your cages deeper than two feet, just buy the size of wire, you know, 30 inch or 36 inch wire. That way you don't have to cut it long ways. I think one 50 foot roll probably would have done all three cages. I'd have to measure it out to know because I did use quite a bit of leftovers from other projects. ready for doors and sandboxes. Okay. One little detail I forgot about in here. I just need to put a block in there as a, a door stop at the top. So I wheeled my 
air compressor over here so I can snap these in here. I'll get That's an old piece of the, the trampoline top. There's a nice door and we'll put one barrel lock. These barrel locks, you know, they come with the, the loop that they're supposed to go into. But I have found on the farm that anytime you can just put the barrel lock on and let it go over the door like this, instead of trying to put it like this and going up into the loop, this is way more reliable over time because things shift and it, those loops just don't fit anymore. Pack of barrel locks off of Amazon. Not promoting anything in particular, but... Sometimes people ask, where did you get those? Barrel lock centered up pretty close. This is just the details of getting, getting everything put together. I'll go ahead and drop that. I can get one of my decorative doorknobs, these doorknobs. I think these are the ones that came off of my mom's kitchen cabinets when she redid her cabinets and rather than throw them away I thought we'd just keep them for future projects like this just like that now unlock drop the door beautiful and a big door to put on here Oops. My little screws. So, these hinges have been in my toolbox for years. I have no idea where they even came from. like that. 